Well, welcome everybody to the Safer World by Design webinar. Uh, today's webinar is presented by Biologics Hub. They provide a risk assessment and data analysis to biotech and pharma company partners. Uh, they also specialize in writing safety assessment reports and are experts in data analysis and data annotation in toxicology. Uh, generating molecular networks for pathway analysis tools. They also uh, help with medical writing, science communication, and data visualizations. And then today's speakers are uh, Violetta and Branca. Uh, Violetta is the business manager. Uh, 10 years in CROs providing literature and database services to pharma companies. And Branca is the lead scientist um, engaged in planning, designing and planning diverse projects, mainly in safety assessment, uh, literature, curation, and knowledgeable or uh, knowledge-based development. And with that, I will pass to the speakers. Um, for the audience, if you Feel free to uh, write out any questions you have uh, during the presentation or after, and then uh, yeah, we can circle back to the questions and, and answer those once the presentation is done. Okay, now I will pass to the speakers. Thank you. Thank you, Connor, and thanks everybody for joining us today. Uh, so in this webinar, we will discuss a knowledge-based approach in the safety assessment of a target to decrease drug attrition rates. So it's well known that over the past decades, the drug discovery based on a target has been the dominant approach in the pharmaceutical industry. It means that defining a target for the research program is first and probably the most critical step in drug R&D. So, here we have a graph that shows the probability of success to market of various uh, stages of preclinical and clinical research. This data is from 2016 and the chart is uh, adopted from the Centers of Medical Research Study Group. Uh, the left hand side of this graph shows that only less than 10% of all compounds that enter clinical phase one will make it to the market. And we have here uh, a busy slide um, where we further were looking into the reasons for such uh, failure rates to identify how much the safety issues contribute to the overall score. So on this slide, we have results of two separate surveys. Uh, the figure on the left shows the results of a study that analyzed reasons for project closure uh, within five major pharma companies between 2013 and 15. And figures on the right depict results of the evaluation of AstraZeneca's project that has been active from 2005 uh, through 2010. Uh, in the study on the left, scientists looked at the reasons for failure at phase two and phase three trials. As shown in the pie chart, the most significant reason for drug attrition was efficacy, uh, closely followed by the safety, which uh, accounted for the failure in 24% of the trials. Um, you see it here in orange color, uh, and it depicts safety in all figures in this slide. And now to the right um, is a study done by AstraZeneca scientists, uh, which covered the projects until the phase 2B in the clinic. Um, it showed that in their case, safety was a dominant reason for project failure in the early phases of development. At the preclinical stage, safety issues uh, were the reason for even 82% of, of all failures occurred uh, at that stage. The other graph from AstraZeneca study depicts proportion of target versus compound related closures that occurred due to safety. So here, as the graph shows, the target-related safety failure rate uh, rose substantially in the clinical phase, there being accounted for about half of project, half of project closures. And to conclude the findings from the industry, uh, here is what we know. One out of 10 compounds 
tested in a phase one trial will get approved. One out of four phase two and phase three clinical trials are discontinued for the unacceptable safety. And furthermore, these safety issues are more often target related as a program advances. So given the conclusions from the industry overview, a target safety assessment calls for a knowledge-based approach to decrease drug failure. Uh, that approach that we will explain in the following slides. We'll show um, how we can use the data from the past research to conduct a thorough assessment of a target early in a program. Um, these target safety assessments uh, should help scientists make uh, decisions on targets, identify risks, uh, build and manage risk mitigation plan throughout the program, thereby increasing the chances of successful drug development. And now I'll hand over to Branka to continue about target safety assessment reports. Thank you, Violetta. Thank you, Connor. So in this part, I will elaborate more on the workflow and the content of our TSA reports. Our approach in creating TSA review combines text mining with research articles, various databases, and pathway analysis tools. To generate the final toxicity profile of the target, all this collated information is critically reviewed by an expert. In each of the chapters, we rely on peer-reviewed research articles and also different database sources, and our toxicity profile in the end is mitigation ready. This chapter of the report, so the target characterization chapter, gives a fundamental understanding of a target biology. Target names and identifiers, target family, domain structure, and conservation. Information of other family members and highly homologous proteins are especially important when a target selectivity is hard to accomplish and or target has a low data density, so extrapolation from the close family members is needed. Target expression and distribution facilitates assessment of all non-intended target tissue and organs, and if available, expression information for preclinical species is included, together with the information of homologs in those species, and these contribute to choosing a relevant uh, preclinical species. Also, this information uh, sh shows the potential for extrapolating information between preclinical species and humans. Um, to better understand target regulation and molecular and cellular function, we analyze target in the context of pathways and networks. Uh, we analyze the upstream regulators for, from transcription regulation to a target stability regulation. Uh, also downstream interaction partners to the cellular pathways and effects it has. By understanding this network of target, uh, we can investigate what would be a molecular or cellular effect of modulating the target activity. So uh, the first insight uh, into the effect of, of a target modulation we get from the genetic studies, both in human and animals. So actually, get gen mouse genetic studies, the human mutation and variant analysis. In mice, we analyze phenotype of complete or conditional target deletion or downregulation, and also activation and stabilization. However, this information has its limitation for our purposes, for purposes of TSAs, uh, since there needs to be a significant extrapolation from this data from a complete deletion in the mouse to the partial or transient inhibition in the human. In this regard, human natural variants and mutations are even more a valuable source of information since they resemble more closely to target inhibition in humans. Uh, especially valuable are variants of clinical significance and one with described phenotypic information. So with all of this previous information in mind, then we analyze the target role in all the organ system where the target is expressed. Firstly, we investigate target physiological role during development and in the adult. 
and also we investigate target uh, association with diseases. We compare these findings with reported mouse and human phenotypes. Um, understanding this organ system role helps us to identify key, key questions on the safety of target modulation in each of the organ systems, but also it supports the basis for development of new therapeutic drug. So another highly valuable toxicity knowledge comes from a competitive uh, compound information. Research reports for any previous drug that is used to inhibit the target or related pathway. And we review both preclinical and clinical information. The, there we focus mostly on safety results and adverse effects, although we extract different information like chemical class, mechanism of action, uh, therapeutic area, preclinical model, etc. Um, however, the availability of and the value of these data, especially preclinical data, vary considerably depending on the on drug and probably the phase of the discovery. For compounds that are uh, usually the compounds that are early in discovery, it's very fine to uh, hard to find this kind of information. If the drug is registered, then both preclinical and clinical safety data can be available or we could find it. So in the end, we summarize all this or we take in consideration all this previously mentioned information and build the safety risk summary. The safety risk summary is organized by organ system and is ranked based on the weight of evidence. Uh, this is what you see on the screen, one of the example of safety alert that we generated for PIM1, which is setting down in kinase target. Uh, so we re report the toxicity for each of the organ system, uh, also the source of information, whether it's human, animal, in vitro, or ex vivo data, and what would be a type of modulation. So in this uh, uh, example, it's either inhibition or deletion, but depending on the request, we also do activation. And also what is the specific safety risk reported for that modulation and for that organ system. Um, so now we'll go back one, to one of my first slides to summarize the writing process. In TSA review, uh, diverse target data is collected and it's combined to generate the toxicity profile of the target. Based on this profile, mitigation strategy can be generated. Um, there is another thing to consider when putting together a good TSA document, and that uh, depends on the project milestone when the target assessment is requested. Uh, this in large affects the detail level of writing. We generally should correspond the project stage. We, we at Biologics Hub have developed two types of TSA reports that should meet the needs in understanding target safety. Uh, one would be a brief TSA report uh, suitable for early phase of discovery. Uh, by the complexity, it also fits well with new targets that do not have much data on it. A detailed target safety analysis is usually conducted as the target advances at the point when the scientists require more specific data on potential risk to, be, uh, to build a um, focused risk mitigation strategy. And wanted to conclude today's topic. Uh, TSA reports are an important knowledge-based approach, crucially identifying and avoiding target-related risk that enhances the success of decision on which target to move forward. It provides the expert assessment and interpretation of literature and available databases. There can be several types of TSA documents that differ in detail level that correspond to project stage. And finally, TSA report is a dynamic document that is generated at the start of the program and further updated with new safety findings, allowing for building the risk mitigation strategy later in the project. So, this is what we prepared today for explaining the process of, of how we do the target safety assessment. And I don't know whether there is any questions. There are any questions? 
Yeah, and uh, also this is our information where you can contact us. Thank you.